is but the dawn, and for myself, is in the morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Me and James both have been sick, but we just praise the Lord for what he's done for us. chapter the seventh verse says for as he thinketh in his heart so is he 
Eat, drink, saith to he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. I want to focus in on this very first part of this verse. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Or as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Let's pray together. Father, speak to our hearts this morning. Let us hear your voice and yours alone. We're going to ask it in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Amen. Let me see it. The one area as a believer that you're going you're gonna to get hit with from the devil is in your identity, who you are as a Christian. <clears throat> the devil will always come against you. Now, you need to remember that the Bible says that the devil is the accuser of the brethren. It's his job to, to come along and to tell you that you're not saved, to tell you that you're no good, to tell you that you're, you'll never be anybody, you'll never get anywhere. That's the devil's uh, that's his job. That's what he does. He's an accuser of the brethren. And so the Bible begins to talk about our identity and who we are in Christ. We're a new creation. The scripture says, if any man's in Christ, is a new creation. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. And so one of the areas I want to talk about today is how do you see yourself as a believer? How do you see who you are as a Christian? Do you wake up every day and say, well, you know what, I, I'm, I'm no good, I'm nothing, I'm just some old lowly sinner that, that uh, just messes up everything, and, you know, how you see yourself? Because the Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. As you think in your heart, so you. Words are powerful. I was thinking the other day, I, I, I had one, you know, one of those days where everything just rubs you wrong? And it was, I had one of those days where I walked into work, and I don't know what it was. It was National Pick on Kevin Day or what. But everybody I saw, who I had saw the week before, just when I walked in the door that day, everybody looked at me and said, man, you're fat. Well, I'm going to see another guy. Well, where, how'd you get so fat? <clears throat> see somebody else. Well, man, you're awful fat. And I'm thinking to myself, what is wrong with you people? What does it matter if I'm as big as a Goodyear blimp? What does it matter to you? And I got to thinking, you know what they call me fat? I don't see myself. I still see myself as a 23-year-old boy uh, riding on the bus all across the United States, singing gospel music, thin as a board. Uh, the, the, you know, I still see myself. I don't see myself as a middle-aged fat man. But as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. You wake up every morning and think, I'm never gonna, this will never get better. I'll never change things. I'll never be any better. Guess what? You're probably going to be stuck there. Because as you think inside of you, now when it's talking about in your heart, it's not talking about the organ in your heart. It's talking about in your innermost man, in your spiritual man. As you think in there, so you are. That's how you, that's how you operate your life. However you think inside of you dictates how you live your life. You take on a job, let's say you got a, uh, you get offered a job and, and you're not trained at the best or, or you might not have the best of education, but you decide that you're going to tackle a job that you've been asked to do. If you put your mind to it, you begin to work hard, you begin to believe, and you begin to study a little bit and, and watch what people are teaching you to do, guess what? You can do things that you didn't necessarily go to college to be trained to do, as you think you can. I'm doing a job now that I didn't, I didn't have any training to do, didn't, didn't go to school to do it, uh, not the best at it, but I went into it with the attitude is that, you know what, I can do this, I'm as good as the next person, I can do this because God is with me, God is for me, he has, set, he has, uh, he has given me the gifts that I need, the talents that I need, he's going to bless me, he's going to equip me, he's going to make sure that I'm successful in what I do, and I believe that. And as I believe that, God begins to work out in your life the things that he's got for you to do. But if you walk into a task saying, you know what, I'm no good, I can't do this, I'll never be anybody, guess what? The reality is you probably never will be. Because as you think in your heart, so are you. I've never pastored a little church. Never pastored a little old country. I've never pastored a little old country church. Now, every church I've pastored has been in the country. But I refuse to have the little old country church mentality. Well, we're just a little old country church. Ain't nobody going to come out here to listen. Ain't nobody going to come out here and be a part of what we're doing. The big church in town, now they get all the crowd, but we're just some little old country. No, we're not. 
We are as important as the big church in town. We are as gifted as the big church in town. We are resourceful as the big church in town. There ain't a task that God put before us that this little church couldn't accomplish if we put our hearts and our minds together to do it. We are as special as anybody else, not because of our numerical number or the lack thereof. We are special because God chose to plant this place in this place, and as long as we follow the Spirit of God and do what He asks us to do, we are as important as the next person around town. Amen. Yeah, you got it right there. Yeah. How am I doing, Charlie? Is it better than last week? <laughs> so how do you see yourself? See, you got to think about this for just a minute, because some of y'all may not be grasping what I'm laying down. How do you see your, yourself as an individual? Maybe you were told that you were nobody. Maybe you've been told in the past that nobody will love you, that you're nobody special. I've, I've told you the story before, but let me t tell it again. It ties in with this, what I'm trying to get across to you. I had a little girl about, uh, she was about, about 15 years old. And she come forward, uh, this has probably been 10 years, 10 or 12 years ago. She came forward during vacation Bible school and got saved. And so my my, uh, my policy with, with young people when they get saved is I always go talk to the parents about baptizing. Because as Baptists, we don't believe that baptism saves you. Baptism is an outward expression of what God has done in your heart. And if a young person doesn't get baptized, that doesn't change their salvation experience. Uh, they can wait till they get older and their parents you know, want them to do it. But I always go and talk to the parents about it. And so me and one of my, one of my men, went. we sit down, we talk to this particular family about this little girl um, joining, uh, becoming a Christian. And I'll never forget it. It was a profound time in my life. I hardly ever lose my cool um, Especially now that I've gotten older. When I was a young guy, I lost my cool all the time. Now I got older, it's just too much effort, you know. <laughs> Who wants to? It's too much effort. But I lost my cool this day, and I hardly ever lose my cool with church people. I lost my cool this day. We walked in the house, and we sit down, and we can begin to say, your daughter came forward during vacation Bible school and gave her life to the Lord. I just would like to talk to you about the potential of baptizing her. The, the mother looked at me, and she looked at the daughter, and she said, that can't be possible. So what do you mean that can't be possible? She said it can't be possible because she's too stupid to understand what it means to be saved. Exact words. And you can see the, the look in, the, in this little 15-year-old girl's face. And she looked at the girl and said, I don't want to be, I don't want to put you down in front of uh, the preacher and, and this guy while he's here, but you know it's true. You're not smart enough to understand what it means to be saved. And she went on to berate this little girl. And finally, I took all I could take. And I said, ma'am, we're, we're going we're to leave. Um, we're not going to stay here any longer. But let me say this before I leave. The only stupid person I see in this room is a mom and a dad that would tell a 15-year-old kid that they're too stupid to understand something. And you know what has happened to that girl? Her life has been on the sidelines ever since. Because she got heard, to, told to her, you're too stupid. As a man thinks in his heart, you get that stuff spoken into you and you begin to believe that, you won't be able to do nothing right. Everything you touch will mess up. Because as you think in your heart, so are you. Look at what Luke 6, 45 says. <coughs> it's important about how you think because look at what it says in Luke 45. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bring forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart brings forth that which is evil. For what? For out of the abundance of the what? Your inner man. Out of the abundance of the heart, what speaks? Your mouth. For as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Eventually, how you think in here finds its way out here. And out of what you've got built up in here, your mouth begins to speak. So begin to ask yourself this question. Am I a negative or am I, am I a positive person? You figure this out real quick. Listen to how you react to situations. You, you go to work tomorrow morning and they say, well, there's going to be a layoff. And you say, yep, I knew it. I'm going to be the first one. 
They're going to lay me off. Sure, the world going to be broke. They're going to have no money. How are we going to make it? They, they're just doing it to get rid of me. That's exactly why they're laying off everybody. Just to, you might have a company of 500 people, but they're going to lay off 400 of them just to get to you. How I mean, if they want you fired, they'll walk in there tomorrow and say, you know what, you're out. See you. But how you, how you put in your heart eventually finds its way out. You beat your kids up long enough, you beat your spouse up long enough and tell them nobody will love you, you're not important, you're not special, you're nobody, eventually that person will begin to believe that they are not special, they are not nobody, they'll never accomplish nothing, and the words that come out of their mouth will dictate that all along. Likewise, you put together with somebody a child who's told that there's no limits too big that they can't reach, there's no mountain too high they can't climb, there's no valley too low they can't go through, the world is theirs if they'll take it, if they'll have faith and believe in God, all things are possible to them to believe. They will begin to, as that is stored up in them, eventually it will come out of them. There's nothing that I can't accomplish. There's nothing I can't do. I am somebody special. I don't have to have the name in the community that everybody knows. I am special because Jesus Christ lives on the inside of me. He died on the cross at Calvary for me. He said I was special. I don't care what the rest of the world says. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. This little old boy from Shawhan, Kentucky. Just right over the road there in Bergen County. This little boy has traveled the United States, recorded three albums, one with a national record label, been on television and radio, and couldn't sing, <laughs> and didn't care. <laughs> because I believe. Bye -bye. Never forget, we were singing in... Uh, Jackson, uh, Jackson County uh, hymn sing in Jack, uh, Ripley Waters, West Virginia. So if you go to up 64, go to Charleston, and you go 77 North, there's a place called the Jackson County Fairgrounds. And we pulled in there one night. We, had, we were tra traveling in my father-in-law's van. And on that van, we had two $20 magnetic signs on the side that said Redemption Quartet. We pulled into this hymn sing. We found it in a singing magazine back in the day when they had those kind of things. We found this place and we called and signed up to sing and and uh, we pulled in this place thinking it was just you know a little country sim sing. Well, honey, they was silver eagles buses <laughs> and our national groups that are in the gospel music hall of fame were there. And we pulled in there, cell and I said, "Boy, we can't do it. Turn me around, take me home. We can't I, look at us pulling in here with this two twenty dollar sign on this van and all these big buses pulled in there." But we decided. We were going to go on to sing. Because we made a decision that we knew we weren't the best, but we knew what we were doing it for. God had called us to do this. God had asked us to do this. And so we were going to do what it was he asked us to do. And so when we, when we got ready, to, the thing got started. There were 1,500 people. That's how many tickets they sold. 1,500 tickets. This place was packed. Never sung in front of a crowd that large. My knees were knocking. But we got up there and we've done the best we could. When we got done, group come in behind us. If I told you who they were, you would know who they were. No, that's not the point behind it. Uh, but they were far better than we were. But they made this statement. We had finished our set with a song. They started their set with the song we just finished. And they said, those boys tried to sing that song for you. Let us show you how professionals do it. Oh, it's the best thing you ever happened to us. Great. We walked on over to our tape table. There was a little area where we had tapes. And we had already recorded our second album, so we had to take this place set up. And we had, I don't, I don't know how many hundreds of tapes that we had, but that day we sold out of every bit of product we had. While them guys were singing, at least half of that 1,500 got up and come over to our tape table, ignoring the guys who said, let us show you how professionals do it. Because it's not about any of that. It's about believing that God has called you, God will use you, God will work through you, God will bless you. 
It's about your willingness to trust God and to do what he asks you to do. You might not be the best at whatever it is he's called you to do, but if you'll do it with the best of your ability and believe that he'll equip you, you can do all things. But if you walk into the task saying, you know what, I'm nobody and I'm nothing, you're, you're going to be nobody or nothing. Believe in your heart that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Believe in your heart that he loves you, that he wants to bless you. Believe in your heart that he wants the best for you. Doesn't mean that everything's always going to be good, but if you believe in your heart that God is on your side, he's for you, he's going to take care of things, there's not a hill too high that you can't climb. We walk in the most task that God's called us to do, thinking, well, this ain't going to work out. How are we going to do this? How are we going to make it? How are we going to make ends meet? How are we going to make things work? How are we, how are we, how are we, how are we, how are we? Listen, you've got to, at some point in your life as a believer, you've got to learn to trust God and leave the consequences to him. I love what Charles Stanley said. Charles Stanley made a statement about trusting God. And he asked his grandfather, he said, what does that mean to trust God? He said, Charles, that means if God told you to run towards that, that concrete wall right there with your head down, he said, you run as hard as that concrete wall as you can and trust that God will put a hole there so that you won't kill yourself when you get there. But do we really trust God with all of our heart? Listen to what you're saying. Well, I don't know. How are we going to do it? How are we going to make it? How's it going to work out? <coughs> you see, if you'll trust God's plan for your life, he'll make the way. Now, listen to me closely. Doesn't mean that you're always going to see the way right away. See, because most of us want the answer right now. So we want to see the, the, the long-term prospects, right, what it looks like. And so the challenge, i just give you, again, examples of my own life for you to understand. I left the church running about 120 to 130 every Sunday. And then in the back of my mind, the question was, for me personally, do you have it in you to build another, to, to do this again, to build up a congregation? And do you, are you able to do it? Or what, and in the back of my mind here was this, what happened there was just a, just a fluke. It won't happen anywhere else you go. But I knew that I was supposed to come here. But the devil said, I don't want, you won't be successful there. Things won't happen there. Church won't grow there. <clears throat> Things won't change. So I didn't have the end result. I just had to step out on faith and trust. Once I stepped out on faith and trust, then now you can look back over these last four years and see what God has done. But I would have never seen that had I not taken the step that he was calling me and trusted him to do it. See, some of y'all, it's time to make some decisions in your life about trusting God and living for him and putting him first and doing what it is he asked you to do. You don't have to see the end results. When he called Abram, you remember that? When he called Abram, who later became Abraham, he said, leave your family, everybody behind, and I'll take you to a, just go to a place I'll show you. He didn't say, I'm going to show it to you right now, just go. He gave the man instructions to leave his family behind, take his immediate family, but leave the rest of his kinfolk behind and just head out and go. Now, here's the difference between us and, let's say, uh, 200 years ago or 150 years ago, when people were moving out west. Wherever you go in life today, you're within a phone call or a text message or a Facebook live thing, uh, you know, of seeing everybody. Right now up there, they're recording this sermon, and the last two <coughs> sermons that we've recorded, over a 1,000 people have watched the sermons from all different parts. I get the, um, I get the, the, all the analytics on it. You can see what parts of the world people are watching. And there will be people who will watch this video outside of the United States. We can contact the people the way. Back in the 1800s, when they went out west to hunt gold and stuff, when those people left, they never saw their family members again. They weren't. It was a final goodbye. Nothing in this society today that God asked us to do is a final goodbye. We're within reach of everybody within a nanosecond. So don't ever be afraid when God is asking you to do something to test the waters. People say, okay, now hold on a minute, preacher. What if I do it and I was wrong? 
Listen to me closely. If you aim at nothing, you'll hit it every time. You know what I just said? If you aim at nothing, you'll hit that 100% of the time. In your walk with God, when you're trusting God, when you're trying to do what God has asked you to do, sometimes you're going to take tasks that weren't, weren't meant for you to take. I can tell you unequivocally that I am not a youth leader. I'm not a youth minister. I'm not a youth teacher. That's not my calling. I'm not a van driver. It's not me. I tried it for six months and like I lost my religion. Matter of fact, I put a little kid, I told him to buckle up, and he didn't buckle up, and I was trying to get him home quick, and uh, I missed the road, and I slammed on the brakes and threw him into the windshield. He even had a, it bloodied his nose, and instead of fell off for him, I said, I told you so. <laughs> now, a good person would have said, oh, poor baby, you know, I said, I told you, if you hadn't buckled up, if you buckled up, this wouldn't have happened. So I took him into his mama's house, and he had blood running down his nose. I said, he's fine. I told him to buckle up, and he wouldn't listen. A more compassionate person that was called to do that was, oh, come here, baby. Come here. That wasn't my calling. And I was trying to do something outside of my calling. Well, we miss it. So what do you do when you miss it? You back up and you punt. You go refigure out what it is that you're supposed to be doing and get back on track. But listen to what you're saying. Out of the abundance, whatever you're putting in here, whatever is stored in here, the good out of the man, uh, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth that which is good. An evil man, as he stores up the doubt, the negativity, all that stuff, eventually it will find its way out. So, so we begin to ask, ask the idea, okay, can we tackle this? Yeah, the, the man who believes will say, yeah, we can tackle anything that God asks us to do. The man who doesn't believe says, oh, well, here's all the challenges. Ladies and gentlemen, in anything you do in life, you're going to have challenges. You hear me? In anything you do in life, you're going to have challenges. I want you to look at something here for just a minute. So how do we do this? Look at Jude chapter, there's only one chapter in the book of Jude, the 20th verse. It says, but ye beloved, building yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Now what's he saying here? Building yourself, building up yourselves. There comes a point in every believer's life that you've got to begin to talk to yourself. Build your own self up. There comes a place that you've got to quit <clears throat> allowing people to talk you down, quit allowing people to beat you up, quit allowing people to, to be who you depend on, quit allowing people to be the ones that build you up, and if they don't build you up, then you're down and depressed. Why, why didn't nobody say I sung a good song? Why didn't anybody say I preached a good sermon? You've got to, at some point in your life, build your own self up. You've got to look yourself in the mirror and say, you know what, you're a classic. God's only made one of you. You are special. You are important. I build myself up over the morning, honey. I look in that mirror and say, good God, look at that good-looking man. Woo! Yeah. God made you one of a kind. You are classic. Praise the Lord. God broke the mold, son, but he made you. Ooh, that woman you got, Lord, she's so lucky to have you. I tell myself that every day. But you got to build yourself up. Why do you think I'm going to walk through that mirror and say, oh, look at that. You, you, look at that. You are old, fat, ugly, no good, nothing. I'm getting that out in the world. They say, hey, look at you. You got fat. I don't need to go to the mirror and tell myself that. Tell myself, oh, hey, son, you, you shocked. Walk in the room with all them other preachers. They 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 all something, but I, I'm the best at all of them. I'm, I've got it going on. Ain't nobody as good as I am. Now that's not braggadocious. That's building yourself up. Why? Because God called me to do this. Does God make mistakes? No. No. Did God make a mistake when he made you? No. Did God make you ugly? No. Don't look at your wife, look straight ahead. It'll be all right. <laughs> God didn't make a mistake when he made you. He made a unique you. He made one and only you. And when you die, there'll never be another one of you. Build yourself up, man. I've got a purpose. I've got a plan. God's got something for me that I've been put on this planet to accomplish. 
We tend to think that only special people, here's how messed up our society is. We think that the only special people are the people in Hollywood and, all, and singing on our, on our radio stations. Those people are special, all right, but they're a special kind of stupid. You're a special creation in the eyes of God. God didn't make a mistake when he created you. Build yourself up. Begin to talk to yourself. Don't look at that man and say, oh, boy, look here. I'm, I might be I might be older than I was, but that don't, I'm the best version of me there ever was. Woo, look at that. <laughs> Build yourself up. I often see myself... <laughs> <laughs> I often see myself coming to preach, and y'all, y'all, you, you, everybody remember Elvis? Yeah. You remember Elvis and music <clears throat> when he come out on stage? I often see myself coming to the pulpit every Sunday morning with y'all playing Elvis music. When I'm, <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> then I thought, well, I, I also saw myself. I was about, I was about eighty pounds thinner. I could see myself coming out to Hulk Hogan music. I am a real American. <laughs> Woo! Build yourself up. Build you. Listen, Christ died for you. You're special. You're important. Build yourself up. We're going to look at one of them. Then we'll get out of here. Romans 10, 17. Look at this for just a minute. You already know this one. This one's a pretty familiar passage of scripture. It says, so, when, so then faith comes how? By hearing. And hearing what? So faith comes by hearing. How does faith come? By hearing. Faith comes by hearing. Now, so let's take, this, let's take the, 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 the second half out of this. Because this works both ways. Faith comes simply by hearing. So if I tell somebody constantly over and over, you're no good, you're nothing, you'll never be anything, eventually they'll have faith in you that what you said is true. And they'll begin to operate out of that. Well, I am nobody, I'm nothing, I'll never be anything. The same thing is true if I begin to tell somebody you are special, you are important, you can do it, you can make it, you can get through this, you got to believe that. Eventually, their faith will kick in as they hear that stuff over and over and over and over, and they'll begin to believe it. That's why I've often said, if you want a better a husband, you want a better wife, you need to start treating them like a king, treat, treat them like a queen. Start telling them that. When your husband walks through the door, he comes home from work after a long day, instead of barking at him at why he didn't take out the trash before he left to go to work, why this ain't done and that ain't done, when he walks through the door and you look at him and say, oh, there he is. <laughs> Ah, oh, there he is. Come here, husband. Sit in your favorite chair. Let me take off your shoes and put on your favorite pair of slippers. What can I do for you, oh husband? And I? Some of y'all, some of y'all look at me like, boy, that ain't never gonna happen. In my house. <laughs> Good, <you know. laughs> Gotta have faith. <laughs> faith comes by hearing. <clears throat> the absolute opposite of that is true as well. If faith comes by hearing, then doubt also comes by hearing. You take that same situation, turn it around. Man walks in from work, and I use that example, man walks in from work, and he, come, he comes in, and he's constantly berated. My mama told me I shouldn't have married you. I should have listened to my mama. You're the worst choice in the world. Why do I think you're lazy, you won't do nothing, won't hit a lick of the snake? Doubt comes in. Maybe I'm not a man. Maybe I am no good. Maybe I never will accomplish anything. Maybe I never will be anything. So faith comes by hearing how? Hearing the word of God. The upbuilding, the encouraging word that you can do it. But doubt also comes by how? Hearing anything other than the word of God. So we've got to now begin to believe what the Bible says about us. We've got to, we've got to look at how we see ourselves. We've got to question how we're talking about ourselves. 
What's the words coming out of your mouth? When you go to work tonight or tomorrow, what, what's your words? Do this for me for two days. See what you're saying. See how many negative is coming out as opposed to positive. And some people will find that they are absolutely 100% more negative than they really ever realized that they were. You got to build yourself up in your faith. Jesus didn't make no mistake when he died for you. He died to make you perfect. He died to make you righteous. He died to make you special. <coughs> and you've got to build your faith up by hearing those things. Now, you think I'm kidding sometimes when I'm talking about it. I look in the mirror and say, Ooh, there, look at there. I'm not. Because if I don't believe it, who else will? See, there's an important principle that y'all got to learn. If you don't believe in you, who, who else is going to? For me to be who I am, I need me to believe in me. I don't need you to believe in me for me to be who I am. I need me to believe in me for me to be who I am. Because I was me long before I ever met you. I've been doing this 27 years. I was me long before I ever met you. I need me to believe in me in order to be able to do what I do. And I believe in me not based on my own abilities and my own qualities. I believe in me based on what God's word says about me and what he's called me to do in my life. And so I'm not afraid to make decisions. I'm not afraid to make choices. Sometimes I'll make mistakes and when we do, we back up and we, we, re, we rethink it. Mistakes are not fatal unless you let them be. Mistakes are a proof that you're living and you try. And when you make them and they don't work out right, back up, recalculate it. It's like the GPS. You know, everybody got a GPS and it said recalculating. You missed a turn. Recalculate this thing and then get back on track. But don't ever, listen to me, don't ever put a period in your life story where God has simply put a comma. So many of us get to a place in life, we go through a divorce, we go through a death, we go through a loss of a job, we go through whatever it might be, and we put uh, financial problems or whatever, we put a period on there as if this is the way it's always going to be. No, it's not, honey. It's a temporary. The book of Ecclesiastes says to everything, there's a season. You might be in a season right now you don't want to be in, but you're not always going to be there. Keep believing. Keep having faith. Keep telling yourself that it's going to be all right. Build yourself up. Keep listening to yourself. Say the words of faith, what the Bible has to say, and eventually you're going to look up, and you're going to be out of that season and into a place where God can bless you in ways you never thought possible. But you've got to build yourself up. See, here, listen, I'm done. Somehow we want to super spiritualize all this stuff and say, well, God's got to do it all. No, he don't. God's already done everything he's going to do. He's give you his word. He's give you his promises. Now you got to do something with it. The word works if you work it. But if you're going to sit back and say, well, you know what? God will take care of this. Right, God ain't going to get you a job if you don't go out there and put an application into the place that's hiring, that ain't how it works most of the time. Most of the time, it takes you going with a pen and a paper, filling out your name on the bottom line, and, and the guy calls and interviews you. You got your part to do. So do your part. Wake up every morning and say, I'm blessed by God. Dad, look here, I'm alive. Some of you come here this morning just dragging in, you know. Uh, but hey, you're alive. There's a whole lot of people that didn't open their eyes this morning. There's a whole lot of people, church, that opened their eyes in a foreign land that didn't have a car to drive to church like you do. There's a whole lot of people opened their eyes this morning in a foreign land that didn't have clothes to put on their back like you do. Even if you think that I don't have nothing to wear. <laughs> I looked around the house the other day. I got three pairs of shoes. A pair I got on a pair of new tennis shoes, and a pair of old tennis shoes for the summertime to mow and stuff in. I looked in my wife's closet, <laughs> and there is a box of shoes that nobody has even fooled with in the four years we've been here, lived in this house. Why does everybody need that many pair of shoes? 
And she'll text me all the time. I went by a shoe store and got this deal and that deal. What about all the other pairs that you ain't worn in the four years we've been living in this house? You may not have what everybody else has. But I guarantee you, you got more than some. How many got their family here with them this morning? Hey. You know, don't ever take that for granted. You're blessed. Tell yourself you're blessed. Say with me, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Beyond compare. Beyond compare. You believe that? You're blessed. Ladies and gentlemen, if we learned anything out of this this last week, the governor, state of Kentucky, called today the day of prayer for Marshall County High School. If you've learned anything out of this week, don't ever say it can't happen here. Because on Friday, you realized it could happen here. But don't ever take the day for granted. Because something as simple as sending your kids off to school for, for three families at least. Was it three families who killed and the boy that done the shooting? But those three families, their lives are forever changed. You might wake up on the wrong side of the bed and feel like you don't have nothing and all that. Okay, that's fine. But get over it real quick. If you're healthy to some degree, you're able to be mobile. You got shoes on your feet, food on your table. You might not have what everybody else has, but guess what? Everybody goes out the same way. In a hole in the ground. Make the most of your life. Quit beating yourself up about mistakes that you made and start believing in the God who saved you from the mistakes that you made. Trust him this morning. Let's stand on your feet. Every head bowed their right across the room this morning.